So if there's a compensation event, notify the claim, <coughs> notify the price adjustment and the time required. Don't just assume, oh, this is a compensation event, I'm going to be okay here, it's going to be dealt with. The standard contracts prescribe in quite a lot of detail the price adjustments that will be made and how they'll be made and everything else. These contracts don't. It's so it Really, it's left quite a lot up to the contractor to come up with the price adjustment which is necessary, which I just want to deal briefly with clause 4.6 then as well, because it's one that's used quite a lot in these contracts in my experience, because the EUR, has, the EUR can request the contractor to give the employer's representative, within 10 working days of receiving the request, a quotation for any change to the price and time for completion. So there you go. The EUR will come to the contractor and say, what do you need for this? How much is going to be and how much time do you need? It's As I said, it's not as prescribed as in the main contract. So you do have quite a lot of leeway there and quite a lot of latitude. Um, so, but also, if you're asked for it, absolutely give it. There's loads of instances where they're asked for it and they're not given it. And I don't understand why, because then all of a sudden the EOR says, well, I'm not going to make any instruction. Then I'm not going to give an instruction or else I'm going to go off and assess it myself. And the contractor says nothing. That's, that, that too is a claim. And as I say, when I tie it all together at the end, you'll see how that also becomes a claim. So if you're requested by the EOR for, an asset, for a quotation, then make sure you give your quotation and make sure you give the quotation that works for you. So now, in terms of making your claim, clause 4.7 is the critical clause, and that's on page six there of your contract. That's the equivalent, if you like, of clause 10.3 under the standard contract, so everybody refers to 10.3 notices. They're not, the 4.7 notices under this contract. So if the contractor considers that, this contra that, this, that under this contract, critical under this contract, there should be an adjustment of the price or that it has any other entitlement against the employer and any other entitlement. And that's why I've tried to say to you today, you have lots of other entitlements under this contract. People don't seem to know about them. I've identified them for you there. There's lots of ways of bringing in entitlements. If you bring it in and make your claim, then this is how you do it. Sorry, make your claim on the basis of any other entitlement. Against the employer, under or in relation to this contract, the contractor must give the employer's representative notice of the claim within 10 working days of when the contractor became or should have become aware of it and full details of the circumstances and the amount claimed within a further 15 working days after giving the notice. If the contractor does not give the notice and details according to and within the time required by this clause, the contractor is not entitled to an increase in the price and the employer is released from all liability to the contractor in relation to this matter. So if you hear nothing else today, if you go home having not even heard a word I said, here the employer is released from all liability. You do not want to be sitting in front of me or any other lawyer in a conciliation claiming something where you haven't put in your 4.7 claim because you simply will not get it. The employer is released from all liability. You must get your claim in within 10 days of becoming aware of it or when you should have become aware of it. I'm going to give you some practical tips in a second as to how to deal with your 4.7 claims. So actually we'll move on to that now. So just in terms of some tips, as I say, <coughs> make your claim in writing sounds extremely basic and I don't want to act like I'm talking to four-year-olds, but make your claim in writing. An oral claim doesn't suffice and trust me, they come up. I'm, I'm constantly asked, but, uh, but I said it to them. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not in writing. You haven't made a claim. Issue your notice within 10 working days. It defies belief how we as adults cannot manage this 10 working days. It's so basic and it's so clear in its meaning. If, as I said at the outset, you have spoken to your EOR and you know that he's a fellow who goes around with his iPhone in his hand and you send him an email and he gets it two minutes later, then fine. Send it on the 10th working day and knowing he will get it two, two minutes later. And you know what, if he doesn't, well then, you can argue that he typically did, so that sort of thing, right? But if, as I said, he's a guy who wants post or register post or a stamp or anything like that, then you've got to send it on the 8th working day. Don't wait till the 10th working day. Because if you come into a conciliation saying that you, he got it on the 12th or the 12th day, <laughs> that's not a claim. It's not valid. And I will rubbish it because it didn't get in on time. It's that simple. And the reality is you know about your claim from day one. So make it. And make sure he gets it within the time as well. Because it's the easiest thing in the world to argue. Claim wasn't made on time. Simple. And you're scuppered. Again, the details must be submitted within 15 days. Again, that, that follows the same advice. Now, the, there's one thing as well that's not dealt with in these short-form contracts, which I think is probably a mistake, and that's delay with continuing effect. It is prescribed in the standard-form contract, where you're obliged to give monthly updates. And I suppose 
in this contract because the, the, the time for completion tends to be shorter. It may, maybe isn't required as much, but it does tend to trip people up because if you have something that's causing sort of an ongoing delay, then you should make it your business to keep notifying it. I mean, I say to people, just to even to err on the side of caution, keep notifying it every 10 days that you're still aware of it, that it's still there because it kind of, so all of a sudden everyone kind of went, well, I said it and everyone knows it's there, but no, because then the EUR, get, you get into a, 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 a row on the final account and the EUR says, nah, well, it wasn't notified. So again, it's not provided in the contract. I can either, I can argue either side of it, depending on who I'm arguing for, but to be on the safe side, you need to just put in the claim. And I say every 10 days. State how the claim arises. Under which clause does it arise? If, for example, you know, if you're looking at, say, 2.2, as I said earlier, I think it's 2.2, isn't it, with the, um, the where another contract, sorry, 2.7, where, where another contractor hasn't arrived to decide to do what he was supposed to do, state that. Then say in it, you're, you're requesting an extension of time because of the failure of X Limited to lay the rebar, whatever else they're supposed to do. So state it. State, I'm making my claim in accordance with clause 4.7 under clause 2.2. Two, sorry, 2.7. <coughs> so just, and use the language of the clause as closely as possible. It's, as, as I say, once you know these clauses and once you have them to hand and, you know, highlight it, it's not difficult. You just adapt your circumstances. And as I say, they only have three lines, maybe four lines maximum, so it's not difficult. But if you keep to the letter of the contract as much as possible, there's much less scope to argue against you at a later stage. Again, I said earlier as well, you state when you need the instruction by in order to avoid any delay. So there's no point in telling him, you know, 10 days later if the, if, if the thing took effect today, you know, and you've men standing around doing nothing because, you know, somebody hasn't done what they're supposed to do. There's no point in telling him in 10 days' time then. Just tell him now. So state, state it now. Tell him you need the instruction now and provide as much detail as possible. So all of this just leads to, as I say, if you do end up in the unenviable situation of going through a conciliation or something, then at least you have all of the paperwork. So now... This probably looks quite daunting, but it's not meant to, and it's meant to sort of demonstrate to you all how the whole claims procedure ties up. As I said up there, right, you have five, sorry, there should be five there. It should be 4.2, 4.4, 3.4, and 3.5, and 2.7. Sorry, that's a mistake. You might just add in 3.4 as well there. Your claims arise in these, will arise in these five situations. Within the 10 days, as I said, you issue your clause 4.7 notice. Your EOR will, accept, will either accept it, in which case, perfect, he provides an instruction, you get on with the job and all is fine. Alternatively, your EOR may refuse to accept your claim and refuse to provide an instruction, or, which is more common, the EOR will ignore you. The amount of times these problems arise because the EOR does nothing. That is a claim in itself. So what people don't appreciate is you can't just go, well, he didn't say anything, he didn't do anything, or he didn't give it to me. Now, that's a claim, right? So issue a 4.7 notice. And this is what I said at the outset, you're all going to kill me now and start saying, we haven't time to be writing all these letters, we haven't got full-time administrators. That's not what this is. This is simply another letter within another 10 days. If, for example, you say to him, I need an instruction, I need it within seven days. Seven days pass, he doesn't give you your instruction. Then within 10 days of that, you write another letter saying, I needed this instruction, this is now another, this is a claim, because you recall earlier I said, it's another compensation, it's a compensation event if you've asked for an instruction and you haven't got it. So be clever, write the letter. Now, sorry, we'll go through it and then I'll sort of tell you how to, how to kind of, I suppose, close it all off. Alternatively, your EOR, EOR might accept your claim, but then as I, as I showed you earlier, clause 4.6, he might request the quotation. He may accept your quotation and provide an instruction, and again, all is good, you continue with the works in accordance with your instruction. He may not agree to your quotation and he might make his own assessment. If he makes his own assessment and you don't agree with it, that's a claim again. Because if he's not giving you enough time or enough of a price adjustment, then that's a claim. So you need to issue another letter. So again, if you've said to him, if he requests a quotation, you must give it to him in 10 days. If you say to him then, make your, you know, make your instruction within 10 days. If he doesn't, then you've got 10 days to issue your claim. So again, it sounds kind of convoluted and complicated all these 10 days or all these times. It's not. If you're keeping a sort of a, it's a simple case of putting it in your Outlook calendar, E or due to respond on X. And if he doesn't, put in a claim within the 10 days of that. And at least then you have your claims made. The other thing that might happen is that he may get your quotation and not provide an instruction, in which case you have a claim again. So you've asked for an instruction, he hasn't given you one, you're back to the situation where you have a claim. So you can see where all of this leads you back. And this is where, more often than not, I find people trip up on this contract. Because while they may, may start out very good and they look for an instruction or they make a claim, they think that's the job done. 
the, the contract is vague on it. I mean, the standard contract provides timelines on this. The EOR must revert within <coughs> 20 days, and if he doesn't, then there's an automatic determination that there's no price adjustment, and then the parties have 28 days to go to conciliation. This contract doesn't provide that. And this is where I think people tend to almost... They almost rely on the fact that there's procedures in place so that the once they've made their 4.7 claim, they're home and dry. You're not home and dry. And that's what this, if you take this away, you'll see it all leads back all of the time. So you might ask them, OK, what do we want to do? You don't want to be running off to conciliation every step of the way in this contract. I'm going to deal with conciliation in a second, but that's not necessarily where you need to go. Don't forget you're dealing with public authorities. You could be, you know, you can go higher up. You're, if, if there's a problem arising with all of this, as I said earlier, it's going to be a problem with the EOR first and foremost. Very often the employer is just hiding behind the EOR anyway. Go to your employer. You will have a relationship somewhere in there that you can go to. Go to the employer and say, and say we've done all the, we have all these letters. And if you have your letters, trust me, going to a public authority with all of these letters and saying the EOR is not dealing with us is a very, very, very strong position to be in. Like, harping back to my own experience, as I say, the department will involve me quite quickly when there's a dispute in any contract, and when, particularly when there's more money being looked for. I'll immediately ask for the claim letters because once I see the claim letters, I know what we're dealing with. And as I said, and genuinely, if I see proper claim letters and proper entitlements under the contract, I'll say to the department, I mean, yes, I make my living out of disputes, but I don't relish them, believe it or not. I you know, relish being able to sort these things out. So I'll say to the department straight up, this contractor is entitled to this. They made their claim. It arose under the contract. They're entitled to a price increase under the contract. End of story, the department will give it. And I would say broadly, that is the situation for most public authorities. So as I said, go to the employer. If necessary, go political. You know, Go to the local representative. You know, Bring it up the chain. You know, as opposed to running in, running straight away into conciliation, do bring it up the, tra- up the chain on a sort of a political basis. But don't try and do it without your claim letters. That's why I'm saying if you have all of this in place, then you're, you're putting yourself in a very strong situation.